Hello Spellcasters! My name is Chance, welcome to my spellbook, and thank you so much for tuning into the fourth episode of our Cantrip series, or our revised Cantrip series if you want to call it that. Today we're going to be covering Chill Touch in its entirety. This Cantrip actually gave me a little bit of a hard time in terms of coming up with some combinations for it, but I got a couple that seemed to work the best. Uh, there's a small issue with this spell, and I'll cover that a little bit later. Well, maybe, well, I don't know, maybe maybe it's not so big of a deal, but I, I will be talking a little bit later about that. Um, Chill Touch is usable by the Sorcerer, Warlock, and the Wizard. As so far as to say it's found on their spell lists, there are other ways of getting this spell, of course, but it's always going to be found on those spell lists. And it is also found in the good old player's handbook, so we should all have access to that. Now, before we move on to covering its mechanics, description, uses, common, all that good stuff, uh, please check out the full playlist by either clicking on that little drop-down menu up top, or waiting until the end of the video and clicking on the designated end card. In any case, let's dive right on into its mechanics. As with all damaging cantrips, its damage increases based off of your character level. So at first level, it deals a pretty substantial 1d8. At fifth level, it deals 2d8, 11th level 3d8, and 17th level 4d8. Its effect at a glance, tar the target can't regain hit points until the start of your next turn. Until then, the hand clings to the target. Undead targets have disadvantage on attack rolls against you until the end of your next turn. So, this spell does a lot of things. It's a ranged attack roll, or a spell attack, I guess. Uh, so you may roll your d20, add your spell casting modifier, and from there, that determines whether or not your attack hits. If your attack does hit, you deal the damage mentioned above, and a skeletal hand gets stuck to whatever your target is. And it stays there until the start of your next turn. During that time, um, they can't heal, which is super useful. It is arguably one of the best features in this spell. And if you cast this on an undead target, they have disadvantage on attack rolls until the start of your next turn as well. It's very, very good stuff. Its cast time is one action. The range is a super impressive 120 feet. The duration is one round, and the components are verbal and somatic, meaning you need to speak forth in incantation and gesture with at least one hand. The school is necromancy, and the damage type is necrotic. Now, if you can't tell, there are a couple issues with everything I just read out. The first and most obvious being, why the heck would you deal necrotic damage to an undead? In previous editions, if you did as such, it would actually heal the undead more times than not. However, 5e doesn't, that doesn't really happen. However, there are a ton of undead that resist and that are sometimes outright immune to necrotic damage. So it is a little bit disheartening for that. So it's like, yeah, you can do it and you get this cool effect, but the damage you deal is going to be minimal. Um, and there, and it's not just like high CR undead, like there are some very low CR monsters that I personally commonly use, like the Shadow for instance, um, that necrotic damage isn't very effective on at all. In addition to that, there aren't a ton of undead that can self-heal either. I mean, vampires are the obvious example, but outside of them and a couple other higher CR creatures, it's not super common, so um, the usefulness on undead is pretty sad. Another issue with this spell is that it deals necrotic damage. There aren't a ton of ways to modify necrotic damage in terms of maximizing its effectiveness. Yeah, the Necromancy Wizard, for example, doesn't really deal with necrotic damage at all. It's instead focused on reanimating more than anything else, so do bear that in mind. However, overall, it's not a bad spell. At least I wouldn't consider it one. Um, it's fun to use, has interesting flavor to it, so that's all good. There are just a couple a uh, couple issues with the, with the undead bit more than anything else. Now let's move on to its full description here. You create a ghostly skeletal hand in the space of a creature within range. Make a ranged spell attack against the creature to assail it with the chill of the grave. On a hit, the target takes 1d8 necrotic damage and can't regain hit points until the start of your next turn. Until then, the hand clings to the target. 
If you hit an undead target, it also has disadvantage on attack rolls against you until the end of your next turn. This spell's damage increases by 1d8 when you reach 5th level, 2d8, 11th level, 3d8, and 17th level, 4d8. Once again, pretty cool spell, a lot of cool thematic elements with it. I like the fact that it actually creates a skeletal hand. That's why it's called Chill Touch. By the way, this is one of the strangest named spells in the game because Chill implies that it deals cold damage and Touch implies that it's a touch spell, but no, it's one of the best ranged cantrips, at least in terms of overall range, with, um, with that deals necrotic damage. So it's not very aptly named. Me and my friends just call it Lich Slap. I've, uh, I've seen that a couple times online. There are a couple other interesting names for it too, but we'll talk about that a little bit later on here. In terms of what you need to know, very simply, uh, 120 foot range, a uh, skeletal hand gets stuck to someone if you hit them, um, deals damage and sticks to them, they can't heal if they're undead, then they have disadvantage on their attack rolls against you. Note that it says it's just towards you, so if they attack an ally, then that they don't have disadvantage on that attack. So it is a little strange in terms of how it operates, but it's pretty neat nonetheless. It's got a, it's got a lot of things going on for a damaging cantrip. Now let's move on to some alternative uses here. There are a couple ways of using this spell outside of combat that is pretty interesting or even uh, in light combat situations and I'll talk about that in a little bit. The first is uh, using it as a held action. This is something I haven't seen a whole lot in any games I've played but I think it's a wonderful idea. Uh, held actions as it relates to spells, if you're not super familiar, uh, they consume the spell slot regardless of whether or not you activate them. For that reason, cantrips work perfectly for them because you don't consume anything for a cantrip, you just cast it. Um, so it, you can make the trigger, like as soon as he's about to ingest something, I cast Chill Touch on him, and that'll prevent an enemy from healing or turning invisible potentially, and we'll talk about that a little bit later on here. Another great way of using this, albeit a little bit of an evil way, uh, is to use it to have a cleric or other divine individual really question the heck out of their god. Um, this is best done with a certain meta magic called Subtle Spell that we'll be covering earlier, but if you interrupt a healing rite uh, by just subtly casting Chill Touch on someone, odds are that's going to lead to some rather awkward situations to say the least. I think it'd be pretty hilarious, not gonna lie, but um, it might even be potentially game-changing in your world if there's a lot of religious undertones. Another cool way of using this spell that I've heard talked about a few times is using it on invisible creatures. Uh, when a creature turns invisible, oftentimes it can straight up wreck you. However, if they have a skeletal hand still clinging to them, you should be able to approximate where they are and deal with it how, how you usually deal with it. This is one of those things where it's strange because it does apply outside of combat, but it still is damaging them, so it might prompt combat, so it's like a light combat thing. That being said, however, it is really cool nonetheless. Um, if you have any cool alternative uses, by the way, drop them down beneath. This is a really difficult one to talk about because there's not really a whole lot to break down and interpret here. It's very plain what it does. Now, regardless, let's move on to some potential combos you might be able to use. The first of the potential combinations we're going to be covering is Spell Sniper. I'm trying really hard, by the way, not to just recycle the same ones over and over again, trying to pick ones that are really relevant to the spell we're talking about. I love Spell Sniper with Chill Touch for a couple reasons. First and foremost, it doubles the range. That's right, 240 feet away. That's messed up, man. It's literally insane. Um, in addition, and this is the part that really sells it for me, uh, your ranged spell attacks ignore half cover and three quarters cover. This is really good for that potion strategy I was mentioning earlier where you um, hold your action and as soon as you feel like they're going to drink something down then you cast it. Uh, this is really good for that. And then of course you gain the added benefit of learning an extra cantrip which is really nice. 
Another cool way of using this spell is with the Reaper ability that comes with the Death Domain Cleric. At first level, the Cleric learns one Necromancy cantrip of his or her choice from any spell list. When the Cleric casts a Necromancy cantrip that normally targets only one creature, the spell can instead target two creatures within five feet of each other. I think this is really strong overall, uh, especially if you're dealing with enemies that are constantly regenerating. This will give all of your party members an opportunity to take not just one down, but both down and have lasting damage. Now let's get into some meta magic. The first is Subtle Spell. I think this is really strong for just the roleplay elements that come from not healing when someone's supposed to heal. It might make someone look like a sham or that they're trying to peddle snake oil for lack of a better term. Very cool stuff. Um, so Subtle Spell, when you cast a spell, you can spend one sorcery point to cast it without any somatic or verbal components, which is all the components the spell has, so you can cast it component free. Um, a good way to get access to meta magic is through the meta magic adept feat that we've covered much earlier on the channel. Check out our feat playlist if you're curious about all that. And then the second meta magic that might be pertinent is twin spell. It does pretty much the same thing that reaper does. When you cast a spell that targets only one creature and doesn't have a range of self, you can spend a sorcery point equal to the number of the spell's level to target a second creature in range of the same spell. Uh, one sorcery point if the spell is a cantrip. The spell is a cantrip, it's one sorcery point. Meta Magic Adept gets his two sorcery points, so you can use both of these without issue. It is really cool. Is it worth the resource investment? You know, depends on the circumstances. Uh, circumstantially, though, I would say it'd be pretty funny nonetheless, so I don't see why not. Now, let's move on to the heroes of the past. The Heroes of the Past, if you're not super familiar, is uh, all of the comments on the previous videos, or at least the ones that I thought were interesting. There are of course a lot more than this, so feel free to check out the old video by clicking on the link in the description to check it out. I'm also making a playlist for them, so search around for that, you should be able to find it. Um, so there's a couple here. It's really tricky because once again, there's not a lot you can really do with this spell. So Void Atmosphere asked, can you use it like Mage Hand? No, sadly not, and one of our other commenters pointed that out to him. However, he mentioned he has access to both Mage Hand and uh, Chill Touch, so he kind of uses the same hand for them. Uh, if you're a DM and you want to allow that, I don't see an issue with it. Um, just bear in mind the range of Chill Touch is a lot further than that of Mage Hand, so you could flavor it so as the hand gets past a certain point, you, can't, you can no longer control it finely. Something like that might make sense. And I don't know how to pronounce that first part, but Monster Hunt asked, I feel like this cantrip could have been called Necrotic Grasp or Death Grip. Your Lich Slap nickname is cool too. Yeah, those would all be fine names for it, and I'm pretty sure I've heard the, both of them before. Uh, it's just a weirdly named spell for what it is. And then Anthony Reynolds said, What really makes this spell great is it's probably the greatest cantrip a sorcerer or wizard can pick up when dealing with fiends. It is an attack, which negates their magic resistance, and it's necrotic, which very few fiends are resistant to. I don't know about greatest, but the resistance part is true. Um, it's an interesting spell, and I feel like it was way popular before Toll of the Dead came out. Toll of the Dead kind of stole um, a lot of thunder from Chill Touch, just due to the damage dice issue. That being said, however, I, I still think it's a fine spell. Now let's move on to my personal thoughts regarding Chill Touch. I really like Chill Touch for really just its thematic value, um, as well as the awkward situations it can likely take when someone feels like they've been given an ineffective potion or maybe their god might not be real after all. That's some, uh, that's some pretty groundbreaking stuff. But most people are just going to use it as strictly a damaging cantrip, and if that's all you're picking it for, I'm just gonna say, there are better options for you. You have a very limited access to cantrips in 5e, which is fine, I guess, for what it is. So, if you feel like it's worth it, go for it. But from a numbers perspective, you're probably better off with Toll of the Dead. 
With that being said though, there are a couple cool knickknacks that might pique your interest enough to test this spell. If you're just looking to test it though, I might talk with your DM about maybe having a magical artifact that can cast this on your behalf. Something like that I don't see nearly enough in games, so I think Chill Touch is a great opportunity to do it. You can even style it like a, a hand, and like a skeletal hand that you use as a wand. I think that'd be a really cool way of using this spell. Its damage is okay, its range is fantastic, but it's just kind of awkward in terms of what it does. Um, that being said, let me know what you think of Chill Touch down beneath in the comment section. Mention any thoughts, questions, comments, concerns, ideas, or uses of your own. And uh, any stories you have too, that'd be great. Uh, if you'd like to get access to a free one-shot as well, you can do so by going over to the guild hall, links in the description, and using code WELCOME to get yours. And feel free to check out the pinned comment for all my other channels, I'll be adding to it as I complete them, so be sure to check that out too. And I really do appreciate all of you, I hope you all have a wonderful day, and of course, happy adventuring.